Welcome to Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests bring you insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for soul growth. Come journey with us through astrology's energetic cycles and get ready to understand your path in the cosmic roots of the stars. I think I'm on. I don't hear a thing. Hi, everybody. This is Sue Rose Minahan, and today is June 16th. Summer is just around the corner, and that's going to be our topic, the summer solstice. It's a tradition for ever since humanity. We have no idea how far it's gone back, but let's just say probably hundreds of thousands of years. And I'm very excited to bring into this occasion a vibrational energy, which is also as ancient as time. And now it's time for a good vibration panel. Revealing fundamental core consciousness, manifesting through the lens of vibrational frequencies for the season's energetic theme, for the spring and autumn equinox, and the winter and summer solstice, this is your Good Vibrations panel. I am Sue Rose Minahan, founder of Talk Cosmos since 2018, an evolutionary astrologer and student of vibrational astrology, a consultant, workshop facilitator, lecture speaker, writer, Dwarf Planet University graduate, charter member of Kepler Astrology Toastmaster Club, hold an AA degree and Associate of Fine Arts Music degree and Certificate of Fine Arts and Jazz. I'm an artist, musician, mythologist, and pursue esoteric philosophies. I'm Robert Pizzetti, professional consulting astrologer and the visionary behind Deep Earth Astrology and the Deep Earth Astrology Tarot, a divination tool and teaching aid that integrates astrology, herbalism, and natural reverence. I specialize in vibrational and psychological techniques and infuse my practice with a deep connection to nature's spirituality. I'm currently the Grand Pendragon in the Ancient Order of Druids in America and the director of the Magus Gathering in Gore, Virginia. And I'm Linda Berry. I hold a professional astrology certificate in vibrational astrology from the Avalon School of Astrology, as well as a Master of Science in Social Work and Bachelor degrees in Psychology, Mathematics, and Computer Programming. I teach vibrational astrology courses in the School of the Astrology of Vibrational Energetics online. I created Frequency Finder, an add-on to Cosmic Patterns, Sirius, and Kepler software. Frequency Finder provides an in-depth astrological analysis of your astrology chart. As a vibrational astrology researcher, I moderate a vibrational astrology research group, am an international consultant, a published author, and the writer of a free daily blog, The Vibrational Astrology Diary. As an ancient mathematician, Pythagoras' music of the spheres about vibrating stars and planets, the electrical engineer Nikola Tesla said, If you you want want to understand the secrets of the universe, universe, think in in terms terms of energy, energy, frequency, frequency, and vibration. Yay! That is the picture. Hi, Hi, Linda. Yeah, hi, Rob. This is great. We are on again. It's a seasonal clock. And I love these extra meters. Yes, it's Good Vibrations panel and the summer solstice, Stonehenge, Giza, the pyramids, the mounds in North America, they all pointed toward this celestial occasion that twice a year happens. So it's a guiding system. It's ancient. And vibrational astrology, David Cochran was the founder of how this is developed. It's, it's really a systematic research using thousands of charts to find out patterns, vibrational patterns that are within charts. In other words, we have our natal chart, but it's deeper than that. It goes into the vibrations within it. And, and we'll talk about that later, perhaps. But the point is, is it serious as a cosmic pattern software and frequency finder Linda created with all those masters. It's just an astounding device and it really makes it work wonderfully with her classes and with studies. 
This is a chart just to give people an idea that the sun is about time. It's current right now. It illuminates the moon is the past time. It's a snapshot. Mercury is our mental connections. Venus is attraction to beauty. Mars, activation, achievement, motivation is that drive, the mojo. And Jupiter, growth, big. We know these things, but this is really a synthesized quick snapshot. It gets much more involved, but those are code words that you can think of. And Saturn, it elevates, evaluates. It determines what's fundamental. Let's get down to the core. And Uranus, now is the time, baby. And Neptune, what's extraordinary? You know, it's beyond, it, it's further. It's, it's seeing that special dimension. And Pluto doesn't stop. It's obsessive and compulsive. And of course, it drives down to very important changes, I would say. I don't know. I'm probably liberating with that. The Northern Hemisphere, when the sun reaches directly overhead at noon, the Tropic of Cancer, which is at 23.2, it's actually 39 something, it goes on and on degrees, that's latitude above the equator, that's as far as the sun can go when it's directly overhead. And that's when the season begins for summer. The sun seems to stop because as we tilt and we turn and orbit going across, you know, we're doing many motions at the same time, it starts to go back down to the equator, which is the equinox. The sky was always such an important part of astrology, and for many folks today, it's increasingly so. The music of the spheres, you saw that. It's all of our legendary focus. Pythagoras, the ancient mathematician in Greece, he looked at numbers, and he heard this cosmic hymn as a conceptual model. And finally, before I pass the torch on to Linda to explain what's happening for this one that I know everybody is ready for, Nikola Tesla, 1856 to 1943, a futuristic electrical engineer, said to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. That's our mantra. And Max Heindel, the astrologer, mystic, and Rosicrucian founder, also in the 1800s, said, all things are in a state of vibration. So with that, I think I we can close it. Nate, thank you. And Linda, it's love. We're going to wait and find out what is the theme. So what we're doing in vibrational astrology, just to pick up on what Sue was just saying, is we are identifying the vibrational patterns that are moving through us. You know, the music of the sphere is this thing you feel, not hear with your ears. And it's it's a feeling that is all around you. And that's that vibrational pattern that is resonating within us, even though it's not conscious, it's just part of us. And we're here on earth, we feel the vibrational pattern. That's just, it's just, goes with life and it's not something we knew, do with our head. It's something we do with our whole essence. So, let's see, here we go. Okay, so the summer solstice. At the summer solstice, the sun is at its most northern point in the northern hemisphere, we get warmer. When, and this is the winter solstice for the southern hemisphere, they're getting colder because it's not over, the sun's not over them, it's over us right now. And six months from now, the sun will be at its most southern point, and the southern hemisphere will be getting warmer, and we'll be getting colder. So, the summer solstice calls us to face ourselves, take a deep look within, and see what we need to integrate into ourselves. We need to face both the light and the darkness within us and choose where we will dwell. So here's the chart for the summer solstice. And it's not very exciting, quite honestly. 
he got the times there. I hope I got Hawaiian. Uh, oh, I got Hawaiian time right, but I got a PDT on it instead of an HDT. Oh, yeah. That third one is Hawaiian time. Okay. Um, it's on the 20th. It's early because we had leap day. This, this is leap year. And so we got an extra day added in there. And that makes things earlier. All right. Now, this doesn't look real exciting, but looks are deceptive. And remember, in vibrational astrology, we look at all the relationships, the vibrational distance of each two planets, like a string on a harp. And those distances shift, and the tone shifts, the pattern shifts. And here's one of the illustrations of that. I tried adding to this very uninteresting chart. I tried adding um, Eris and didn't do much, but look what happened when I put in Haumea. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what does Haumea tell us about this? It tells us that this is a season when there is a potential for rebirth. This is a time when some things can shift. And as we study this chart, we will see some of what it's concerned about and some of the kinds of shifts that are available to us. It okay. seems interesting that Neptune is a big part of the picture, even from the, uh, just, just the, without Haumea there. And then you bring that quincunx into the mix. Very interesting. Right, and the quincunx is, is significant. Quincunxes tell us what kind of lessons we need to learn, what kind of growth we need to do in the season. That is specifically things that we have to figure out. And, and oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say to, 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 to pick up quickly on this chart with Moon and Pluto. It really is a deep dive, as you said, within our stories of, I don't know how the stories are going to play out with the vibes, but still it's an internal search and it's deep. Reframing our story, perhaps, of some sort. Or reframing, right. as you say. Yeah. There's a theme in this chart. You'll see it in other places. Um, Haumea with Pluto and the moon mm -hmm. means reworking our deep emotional foundations. And a rebirth of our understanding, probably a letting go of some old patterns that we don't need anymore. Definitely. The quincunx here from Haumea to Neptune is a rebirth of our visions, mm -hmm. a rebirth of our dreams, mm -hmm. looking for new dreams, opening up to new possibilities. Okay. Now, we've got two isotraps in the natal chart that are really strong. So we'll talk about those for just a minute. Remember, an isotrap is when a midpoint, like in this case, the Uranus-Neptune midpoint, is sitting right on the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint. And when they're sitting on top of each other, it establishes two resonances. We'll look at those in the next two slides. What this isotrap is trying to do is to help us to have systematic or balanced growth in awareness. And the first resonance is a resonance across the diagonal. See the blue, the, the blue lines going across here? It's a little hard to see because it's a small isotrap, but you know, it's what the universe gave us, so that's the one we have to talk about. Um, the um, this diagonal resonance has two sets of lines. It has a the distance from Jupiter to Neptune, and the distance from Saturn to Uranus, and they're the same length, so they're resonating together. And this is one of those resonances we were talking about that's moving through our system. Big dreams formed into your own unique view of life. And yeah, that, that's really interesting. Anytime that we see 
Saturn and Uranus kind of playing together. We, yeah. we you know that that's always a very impactful moment, especially when you have uh, the addition of the Jupiter, the Neptune, kind of making everything big and, and otherworldly. And it's challenging it, it, to really focus on what is essential at this very moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've yeah. been focusing on and and, and the like um, whenever you have um, Saturn and Uranus, you are challenged to look at what's inside of you. Mm -hmm. So um, now, here's the third resonance. It's to the little ones at the end, the dark blue kind of curvy lines, because those were conjunctions, and I didn't want to put my line over the little conjunction markers. So here we have Jupiter Uranus resonating with Saturn Neptune. And this is sudden big insights into spiritual levels of life. It can also be delusions and deceptions. Yeah, I was going to say that this could definitely be a situation where we're kind of, you know, uh, a, a little bit lost as to what the truth of the matter is. <laughs> yep. This is, in one sense, this solstice has a big question on it. What is the truth? What mm. really is the truth of what's going on? Right. And I thought that was interesting that that was shown. Yeah. It may be a wait and see, trial and error, just kind of keep, mm -hmm. um, suspend, suspend total judgment, just experience. And, yeah. Okay. Maybe. Here is the second isotrap. And it's not quite as strong, but it's still very definitely going to be felt. See the black lines here? Those, the middle of those is the midpoint. And these two sets of planets, Uranus and Mars, and Venus and Neptune, are lining up their midpoints within 14 minutes. So the basic theme here is sudden actions based on beautiful dreams and visions. Hmm. Now, the diagonals, again, the diagonals are always the strongest, strongest resonance. Sometimes they're a whole lot stronger. Sometimes they're a little bit stronger. In the other one, they were a whole lot stronger. In this one, they're a little bit stronger. Okay, so you have here in the diagonals, you have Venus, Mars, and Uranus, Neptune. Okay, personal experience and involvement in expanded awareness and visions. Oh, boy. Now, this is all natal charts, though. Okay, and the sidelines. Here you've got, on the sides, that's the darker blue lines. You've got Venus, Uranus, and Mars, Neptune resonating with each other. Big, spontaneous, idealistic action. I mean, okay. Climate going on in the world right now. I mean, this, this could be very... Could, this could be to, uh, be feeding some very monumental actions. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm going to say about the natal chart. But what I've done now is I've gone to the very strongest vibration in the summer solstice chart. And look at this thing. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Mm. Okay. So this is 49... 245 that's just these aspects are actually in the natal chart there are little fractions of 245 that are all over the chart you can't see them because in the natal chart you can't see them because we can't aspect everything but there is a big 245 vibration concentration in this summer solstice chart and that is 49 times 5, 49 being 7 times 7. So we have the square of 7, or 7 times 7, times 5. What this gives us is to work as a community to, collaboratively, to creatively develop more mature internal patterns of emotional expression and thought. This is, this is remember it said rebirth? At the very at the in the in the natal chart, well, this is starting to tell you some of the things that need to happen. We need to grow up a bit and um, stop being so controlled by our emotions. Hmm. And I, 
and I don't necessarily think that mature always means well developed. You know, things can mature in a negative way as well. So I think there's a lot well, of possibilities. There's a lot of possibilities here. You know, I think cohesion, working together, developing systems, like all of those things are going to be coming coming together uh, as a community, and, and we're starting to see that. We're starting to see those patterns pretty well established. Okay. Now, this is about the big pattern here in 245. And what we have here is we have Pluto, Venus, Mars, and the Sun. And down here, the, the biggest pattern is the four of them with Saturn opposed to them, sitting on all of them. So that's big. Okay. And this can have a couple of kinds of meanings. The deeper spiritual meaning is what I've wrote, written here. Compulsively getting directly involved in sorting out your beliefs and thought patterns. Keep keeping the deep foundational truth and eliminating the trivial deceptive patterns. So yeah. that's... Wow. Now, the other meaning of this, just to let you all know, is Saturn is kind of tricky in transits. In the natal chart, it works better. It's, it's not as difficult as often. But in a transit pattern, it can feel restrictive. Mm -hmm. And the reason it feels restrictive is because it looks at, in this case, our belief patterns, our thought patterns, um, it looks at them and it says, that's a really trivial thing that doesn't mean anything. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. we human beings get attached to our ideas, even if they're not very smart ideas. And when the universe Saturn level comes in and says, forget that one, we're getting rid of that. We get upset. We feel restricted. We feel limited. If you will keep in mind that what this pattern is giving you is the ability to tune in to the really important things and let go of the things that don't really matter. Look at, can you remember what you were upset about an hour ago? Most of us can't. Most of the things we get upset about are not things that we will remember maybe even five minutes afterwards. Is and yet we put all this energy out. That's what it means by trivial things, the things that aren't going to have long-term effects. And we function so much better. It seems as if I, it helps to realize that if one isn't really if things aren't functioning as they yeah. if one wants, then what's obstructing it? This is reminds me of the pictures of Saturn with a cis, right? Cutting down used to be quite agricultural too. With, with one of the time, reaping sticks, cutting, cutting down out. the grain. Yes, yes, exactly. Time to time to reboot. <laughs> well, looking at the, looking at the nature of vibration two forty five with the forty nine influence, that's seven times seven. It's not always easy to go from that very internal pattern to community. That it's is true. kind of. That is a that is a, a rough road, and incorporating Saturn into it, while it is going to be bringing that scythe into the picture for the harvest and the reaping, um, I think that's almost necessary when you're talking about forty nine is to get to that place where you can take these internal thoughts and bring them into the world into a communal. And, and that's basically what this pattern says: is get creative. Yeah, you're going to have to <laughs> do new. Different, try different kinds of things. Do different ways to do it. Get creative. Don't be stuck in the same old pattern. Right. Right. Sounds good. Okay. So let's see here. What else have we got? Oh, yeah. One other thing I wanted to point out here. Look at this little triangle at the bottom. You've got Uranus here, Neptune, and Saturn at the midpoint. One minute. So yeah. this is so precise that this is resonating through all of us. And let me tell you, if you will open up, what this triangle gives you is the opportunity to
to hear the universal truth that's out there. If you're not too attached to your ego's idea of things, you may find some amazing new understandings. And it's worth all that cutting away the debris. It's good. The collective right. unconscious. Okay. So that's 245. I went to 49. Remember that was 49 times yeah. seven, five, 49 times five. Here's mm -hmm. 49. The community of people focused on internal development and supporting each person in the process of their unique development. All right. Now, the quincunx, again, the quincunxes that are hitting into us and teaching us what we need, how to get to a different place. This is a major tool. Mercury, Venus, quincunx in 49, in our communities and in ourselves to let our attraction to beautiful thought patterns be dominant within us. <coughs> This is about developing positive internal patterns and learning to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. To learn to not tell yourself negative things about yourself all the time. I'm a bunch of junk. I'm not worth anything. I'll never mean anything. I'll never achieve anything. None of those things is real. They're all messages that you believe because you keep repeating them. Yep. yep. And so many sages, whether it's Deepak Chopra or whether it's Wayne Dreyer, you know, they all say if we're part of the universe that we can't be that different. So why are we so bad? If we're not. And the universe is encouraging us to move into, to learn how to move into more positive interactions within ourselves and with each other. Oh. Isn't that interesting at this point? Okay, so now we've got a big supersymmetry pattern. Let's see here. I think we need to take the break. So I think we need to Oh, we do. Break. Oh, that's right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rob. Okay, folks, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. This is Linda, Barry, Rob Pacetti, myself, Vibrational Astrology, the winter, summer solstice, winter down below. Okay, we'll see you quickly. While we take a break from this week's edition of Talk Cosmos, let's take a look at this cycle's archetype. We are currently in the period of Gemini. By leaving a cycle based on physical form, integrated through spirit, the energy of Gemini connects spirit with matter, focused on communicating and defining the external. Gemini is a mutable air sign signifying flexibility. Gemini duly focuses upon teaching and learning in order to synthesize the world one lives within. This is Martha Nurwalk. Every Sunday morning, beginning at 9 a.m., thanks in part to NewProSupplements.com, we cover the world of animals. This week, June 23rd, it's an extra Sunday edition. Nathan and I will get the show started, take care of current events, and I'll cover how to prep your dog for 4th of July. Then we get more time with Merritt and Beth Clifton from Animals24-7.org, and Henry the Rooster has a lady friend. Meet Arabella on Martha Norwalk's Animal World, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. to noon, right here on Alternative Talk, a.m. 11. Talk Cosmos brings insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for the soul growth with hour-long programs every Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific on KKNW. Talk Cosmos weekly programs are also available to watch live on the Talk Cosmos YouTube channel and Facebook page. While you're there, make sure you click the like and subscribe button so you get the full Talk Cosmos experience. Or if you'd rather listen to the show archives with audio only, the entire podcast collection since 2018 is available on most podcast carriers. And to find out about upcoming programs, sign up for the newsletter at TalkCosmos.com. So grab your coffee, tea, or kombucha and enjoy the show. Wherever you go, Alternative Talk 1150 is here for you. We're back. Okay. 
This is still the natal chart. Lots of dynamics with rebirth on May. Uh, actually, this is the 121st nope. vibrational oh. chart. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Very good. Good. This, this is the fourth strongest vibration in the chart before the summer solstice. And the reason I have highlighted it is because it has an amazing vibrational pattern in it. You don't see it here. It's in the midpoints. And I'm going to show you how that vibrational pattern opens out. But first, the, it's all operating in 121. You have to remember that whatever you're looking at in a vibration is the way that vibration is being expressed. So 121, a community of dissatisfied people who are restlessly searching for a better answer. Hmm. A few conventions. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I've been seeing with cli clients recently with the vibrational charts especially is, and, and we're getting really to this question of people have been kind of in their bubble for a little while politically yeah. socially you know that nobody wants to say anything they're so they're so they're so frightened to upset anything but that restlessness where you know people want to reclaim their voice is is starting to become very apparent in, in a lot of my clients right now and well, I, I, think I think you're that, seeing a prelude of the summer solstice which is going to hit in four days yeah, yeah. absolutely okay so here goes folks Okay. Oh, before we do the super symmetry, I had to talk about one midpoint. This is Pluto at Mercury, Neptune, and it's zero minutes orb. Mm. Whenever you have an exact midpoint, it is extremely important in a chart. And this one is in a really strong vibration. So here we have First of all, remember, we've got our community of dissatisfied people who are wrestling is searching for a better answer. Well, Pluto at Mercury Neptune is an intense focus on visions and ideals that connect you to a better world. Hmm. So there we go. Now, here's this supersymmetry. This is step one. I took all the aspects out because you, this way you can see the supersymmetry without all those other lines. Okay. What is amazing about this, this is two midpoints interacting with each other. Each of these planets is equal distant from the other. This is like beads on a string, except this is a crossed mm -hmm. string. So this is Jupiter to Mercury, or, well, we could go the, I went the other way. Okay. Neptune to Pluto is the same distance as Pluto to Mercury is the same distance as Mercury to Jupiter. And when you do that, you've got this big resonance pattern. This is just the first of five levels of resonance here. And this first string represents a passionate need to step back and see the big picture. So how are you gonna search for a better way of living? Mm -hmm. You're going to look at the big picture first. That's what that says. And and this is really passionate. I mean, you really want to see the big picture. Okay. So now, second level. All right. See the gold line versus the orange line. Now, this is Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Mercury. So again, this is four planets equidistant from each other. But guess what? They were equidistant from Jupiter too. So you got five planets equidistant from each other, which is a very suggestive number. Hmm. Play, play, play. Wow. We're going to see most of a five-pointed star in this vibration, folks. Mm -hmm. These planets are basically equidistant from each other around the chart, a five-pointed star. Okay, so this second part, remember this is the Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Mercury, revelation of your deeply held compulsive thought patterns that do not connect into reality. Ooh. Hmm. All right. We all have them, folks. 
none of us has a clean slate here. No. <laughs> um, Do they? Okay. So now here's the third Good. one. This one kind of makes a basket out of mm -hmm. these five points. You've got Pluto, Uranus, Mercury, Neptune. Isn't this amazing how this all interacts? Mm -hmm. um, so here we've got a compulsive need for the freedom to open up to new ideas that redefine yourself and your vision of the world around you. Okay. Fourth one, the blue line. Okay. The blue line from Uranus to Mercury to Neptune to Jupiter. Remember, these are all intertwined with each other. All right. Th this, see, we had the green line that went, rem again, things equal distant from each other. And then the blue line picks up and extends it one more. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is this section? A sudden understanding of how to expand your ideals and visions. It's got the Jupiter in it for getting bigger, making them bigger. Okay, one more. A purple line and look at this figure we've got. Okay, so here we've got Jupiter, Pluto, Uranus, Mercury, and you've got this line going all the way around equidistant, each point to the other one within an orb. And what does the last purple line give us? A compelling growth in new insights and understandings. And we'll cover this on the next page. This is a prelude to it. We have three midpoints here, and they show you some additional tools you have. So let me do it on the next page where I've got it all together. So we've got Mercury. See here, it's in the middle here at Jupiter Pluto intense focus on the big picture folks then we've got Neptune here and it's at Uranus Pluto see there that should have a slash line in it sudden visions of compelling inspired awareness and the third one is Uranus sitting here at here's the uranus sitting here at mercury pluto freedom to focus on compelling ideas okay so this is this is the whole picture you all want to make any comments about this one of the things that i've been just paying attention to here and in integrating some of the stuff we've done building up to this point with the past broadcast is there seems to be a lack of mars in all of this, um, the, what? the lack of Mars and the actionable qualities. Do you think that this is still going to be a time where we're really focusing on just the collective thought process, the that whole Neptunian concept of just um, spiritual connection? When, when do you think that the that the uh, where do you think that the the the, the, the ac action comes into play? Rob, okay. I have to jump uh -huh. in if I might just jump in and say that seven times seven is internal and yeah. and cancer yeah. it's within. So I'm thinking that I mean you're I'm not just forgetting well, what this you're is saying. eleven times eleven though. Okay, but. But 11-11 is dissatisfaction, but still it's an internal. It's coming from the large. Okay. Okay. 11 is not internal. It's dissatisfaction with the no, external world. It's true. But I'm thinking with all these different vibrations okay. that we're bringing in, the collective yeah, whole yeah. weaving it in yeah. is, is that this isn't, it's, it's not stimulated from the very get-go mm -hmm. on a natal basis. Well, I do think. Yeah, I agree with you, Sue. I think this chart is talking about the um, the internal, and it's talking about reworking things. It's talking about reworking your external pattern, your internal pattern. And, and, and you know, in terms of Mars, Rob, you need to figure out what you're doing before you take action. Right. 
and I think that was kind of where I was going. It seems yeah. like we've been we've been kind of going through this whole refinement and rebirth process, you know, um, over the past few months building up into this, especially since the equinox to now. Um, and, and we're now it seems like it's getting bigger and bigger. It seems like mm -hmm. that Neptune and that Jupiter is kind of making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm, I'm very curious as to see when that, you know, <clears throat> powder keg gets lit, you know, with right. all when we, can, when we can start acting. And, on it. and I'm actually thrilled to hear this question and dialogue because I must say that I keep thinking too, well, does this mean that I could start this or I could start that? It's the do, 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 action, action, action. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. So I suppose there's little action, but maybe it's not the big action. Mm -hmm. Wow. Maybe. I think when we see Mars enter the fray in a, in a big way is when we're going to we're, we're going to see the uh, maybe that will happen at the fall equinox. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, aren't we going yeah. retrograde at some point? I yeah. haven't looked. In the winter. I haven't looked at it yet. <laughs> I think we in the winter, Mars, Mars retrograde coming up. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think Mars is going to be a big player as a resolution to all this coming into the future. Is pretty. But much we got to get prepped. Yeah. You're absolutely right. We need to have because if we need to let go of things that were held attached and have them revealed, how can we really? You know, it's like projection. It keeps flashing back and hitting us in the face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well, interesting. Okay, well, you know, we'll do the Sabian symbols now. Mm -hmm. And um, they play into this in some really interesting ways. So, Sabian symbol lessons for the summer of 2024. The May, okay, remember what I'm doing is I'm using the distance from the sun to the moon. How far has the moon moved beyond the sun? That, and the, it has moved 165 degrees plus a teeny bit. 165 degrees beyond the sun. This gives us a symbol of 16 of Virgo as a primary symbol of the solstice. And it's the orangutan. This is about tuning into powerful primitive distortions deep within you and recognizing the need to refine and guide those forces into more mature expression. Or else you can be taking for granted your right to do whatever you feel like in life without considering its effect on anyone else. Yeah. It seems to echo what you began with in the very beginning, which I don't remember exactly right now. I wrote it down. I'm writing notes, but yeah, yes, it's an echo. I okay. think the key word there is primitive. Yep. I think that that's a very important word in this, you know, um, very visceral, very off the cuff. And based off of what you, what, what the charts we just looked at, I mean, it seems like it's getting fed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, thinking so of our I mean, birth. Think um, about that moon, Pluto, um, pattern mm -hmm. that, you, you know, that's moon Pluto is kind of a graphic symbol for this vibration. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So now this is the here and now behavior personality level. What is the, our soul lesson to learn? A table set for an evening meal is the picture. So imagine a table, beautiful table set in the dining room for an evening meal. You're preparing yourself by opening up in gratitude, giving thanks for what you have and trusting that you will receive whatever you need from the abundance of life. Or you're constantly demanding and devouring everything around you, mm -hmm. arguing, overindulging, and not appreciating what you have received. That's so important. That really gets back down to looking at ourselves, thinking that we're so terrible, whereas yeah. why? And then not taking uh, the uh, the gratitude for everything that is right now. And, and and to recognize that the things you need will flow to you if you, yes. have, if you are open to them. Yeah, okay. And the spirit wisdom contained in this summer solstice pattern. Telephone lineman at work. 
You are establishing new and more extensive connections between different aspects of yourself and higher, more universal awareness. Or you are getting your communication lines all tangled up so you have trouble separating truly important information from distorted awareness that is, that is mixed in with it. So this is all, this is that basic thing we saw with Haumea in the natal chart. This is about establishing new and more extensive connections mm -hmm. between different parts of ourselves, between us and what's around us, between us and the universal levels of life that we have the potential to tune into. Mm -hmm. That's so this, empowering, opening. It's okay. Yes. The possibilities are amazing. And may the summer bring the development of maturing patterns of awareness within you. With an orangutan. <laughs> yes, an orangutan. <laughs> we, we, our job is to tame the orangutan. Yes. Ah, or to be, yes, interesting. To re repurpose, rebirth the orangutan. It reminds me of the Minotaur where, you know, it was the beast, the, the half animal with you. Mm -hmm. And here, maybe we just need to find the orangutan within us and let it be wild and, and, and be at peace with nature and quit trying to. Well, we need to but... be directing it, allowing it to express its choosing where it expresses itself. And I think that's the most important thing is choosing where to express itself because we've got all of that spiritual expansive energy feeding into things. And if we yeah. don't have a way to kind of let some of that steam out, I mean, that mm. it, it could be a very, very, it could be a time that could drive us into isolation when we need community the most. Yeah. And, you know, just briefly speaking, you know, the, the, the luminaries are having their, their moment because you have the sun, you know, at a highest point in the year. The following day, we have the full moon in Capricorn. Right. Okay. And pulling the vibrational chart for that was vibration 30. So why don't you talk a little bit about the vibration 30 and the research you've done there as far as it relates to community? Because I think oh, that. Okay. as well yeah which okay. does support the whole idea of community yeah, if we're mean, working in so many dimensions yeah. when we have the sun and the moon playing together especially a full moon the day after the solstice i mean that is powerful <laughs> and ruled by saturn and saturn is so integral with the with the two so yes right. the parents are getting a lot well that's traditional i don't know I, and on that i will say folks particularly the day after the solstice watch the news it will be very yeah. interesting to see what happens. Mm -hmm. But 30 is, when we try to understand vibrations, if they're not prime numbers, we look at the factors. Mm -hmm. And we look at the, the vibrational meaning of the factors as a part of, as, as foundational to what the vibration is doing. And 30 is two times three times five. Now this is very fascinating number because two, three, and five are the first three primes. And this is the three of them multiplied together, 30. And when I did the research on 30, 30 is about community in the sense, not of just, oh, there's a community, but in the sense of our relationship to community, supporting the community that we're in. This is very much about supporting the community you're in, not changing it and go finding another one. None of those things. Mm. 30 is about creatively enhancing, supporting, and improving the community you're in. Mm -hmm. Supporting your community and you know, we're, we're, when we look at the amalgam of all of the things we've talked about tonight, that primitive nature, which I think is really mm -hmm. apparent right now, mixed with all of that deep connection to restlessness, uh, taking the internal into a communal sense. These are all things that have a lot of pitfalls along the way. This isn't, it's not an easy process to get from okay. an internal, you know, and to, to kind of reinvest and to maybe invest for the first time into community um, is something that we're going to see a lot of people kind of moving into right now. 
and while it isn't necessarily actionable from a, a, you know a, a visceral standpoint, it's certainly a point where things are kind of churning up to the next level. In, in right. this summer has on a collective basis both conventions in this nation, not the rest of the world, of course, but we have the Democrats and the Republicans that are having their conventions, which means at least these people are getting together on a collective basis. Yeah. And even if they're not there, they're at their homes rooting or talking, but it's something that pivots the, the focus of their heads. But on a personal basis, you know, that's the other spectrum is, I mean, we're all part of this world and, and, and nation, but there's all our own communities that we're involved with so it's it's really got such a spectrum mm -hmm. i thought it might be interesting since we have a moment or two here before the end of the show to just look over the opportunities the sabian symbols showed those are just put here by themselves the potential to sense the powerful primitive distortions within you and learn how to refine and guide those forces into more mature expression as you pre and how do you do this first you prepare yourself by opening up in gratitude giving thanks for what you have and trusting that you will receive what you need and what's in order to deal with these powerful primitive distortions, you need to establish new and more extensive connections between the different aspects of yourself and with higher, more universal awareness. Boy, that's right on target with what I've been. Mm -hmm. it, How's it's that for a, a map. A map. Oh, it is. I think you're our new Deepak Chopra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gra gra gratitude is so important. There was just a very large gathering of druids over in Stonehenge um, for the 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 fiftieth, uh, you know, of the uh, Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids, and really the focus this year was on <clears throat> gratitude and how it's so easy to es escape gratitude right now because we're we're being flung everything telling us that you know we're supposed to be this and we're supposed to be that um it's i i find it very fascinating that you know all of all of this is coming into the picture and gratitude really is the answer for many of us i mean um mm. you know assessing what we have assessing you know uh, who the the privileges that we've had in life how we can access them to uplift our communities and to uplift others uh you know that seems like it's if it, it's in line with that kind of map that you just put up there to to kind of you know work these energies uh in a way that is healthy mm -hmm. it speaks so well gratitude and gets so deep i mean one can just spin off a quick thought but when really gets down to the abundance and the magic of this world that it supports everything and our bodies it is incredible. You know, we have two minutes or a few minutes. Nate, can I have the slides back again, please? My let, slides. let me say Thank one you. more thing about gratitude. Yes. So many people today are in difficult situations. Mm -hmm. And yet we oftentimes forget to be grateful for the opportunity to take a shower. Mm -hmm. To cook food in our home to be warmer or cooler than the season. We have so many blessings, even with all the problems. So many of us have so many blessings. Mm -hmm. True, because otherwise you spiral into this constant, as you had said, the, the entitlement of why isn't it this, that better? Yeah. type thing. It's so true. And I wanted to show here, we usually at the half hour we do it, but hey, we're reworking everything. So I have a few slides just to present so that you know these speakers that we have. We have Linda Barry that has her school, Astro Sleuth, and also an older um, uh, astrological depth, and Robert Persetti with Deep Earth Astrology, and of course, I've taught Cosmos. And just to have, if you go back on the slides, if you don't remember things, there is her email so that you can get that free blog. 
and it'll show up again. And her school, so it is a school of astrology, vibrational energetics, and there'll be another one come January for a class. Contact her. That she, if you want her free blog, please just email her. And she has a Sabian report. Pardon me? Yeah. If you get the blog, you just need to email. And Rob has all of his... um, um, uh, Rob, what do you what do you have? I have my events on my website. And just to end, I'm grateful for both of you. Thank you for spending this time. <laughs> oh, indeed, it is so true. And thank you, everybody, for signing up. For just continuing to support in any way, just to listen. And we look forward to oh, all this experience in the summer. My goodness, and it was so happy amazing. solstice. Happy solstice. Yes, indeed. And the big, oh, vibrations to you. The, the... Thank you for joining an insightful conversation on Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests awaken consciousness by connecting soul growth patterns with astrology's energetic cycles. Be sure to tune in next Sunday, 1 p.m. Pacific Time, to continue your journey through the roots of the cosmic pathway.